Okay. A person engaged in cross-dressing is guilty of an offence and liable to imprisonment for six months or to a fine of 500,000 naira. A section of the section seven of the principal act is amended by introducing the word cross-dressing and defining same as, provided that this section of the act shall not apply to cross-dressing in the course of a stage play or in any bona fide public entertainment. Hello, welcome back to Trash It. So in the house today, we've got your usual panelists. We've got Yori, we've got Jude, we've got Ade, Mr. Jabodantix, and we've got Michelle. Now, what we are looking at today is if the cross dress, if, sorry, what we're looking at today is if the trans community is under attack. Okay, first of all, we're going to look at the trans community in Nigeria. Okay, and what I just read at the beginning is an act that is about to come into, into life being done by the House of Reps in Nigeria. So basically what they're saying is people like Denrele, which you guys must know, Bob Risky and James Brown, who are very famous cross-dressers in Nigeria, will no longer be able to cross-dress, okay? Once this act comes into effect, they will no longer be able to cross-dress. And if they do, they stand the possibility of going to prison for six months or paying a fine of 500,000 Naira. Now this is Nigeria. Let me come to you, Michelle. What do you think about this? Given that the trans community, we're looking at, about, we're talking about equality. We want everybody to be able to express themselves, freedom of expression. But here you are, the Nigerian House of Reps has come out with this. How do you think this is going to affect the community? I'm saying it's, it's really damaging and I don't, I don't actually understand what 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 have the trans community done to these governors, whoever, that are making these rules to make them want to come down so harsh. I think I'm Nigerian. Yeah, I'm in England. But don't we have bigger issues in Nigeria that we should be fighting? Instead, we're fighting these cross dressers for what? I, I, what is it that they're doing that's so bad? You know, so I'm, I'm very confused. I think it's extremely discriminatory and I don't know, I just think, what have they done to you? What is it that they've not given to you? What is it that they've taken from you? What's your business? What's your business? Okay. And when you look at it in Nigeria, you have a lot of, a lot of people are for or against, okay? P people like Bob Risky, Den Rele, and James Brown. When you look at some posts on Instagram sometimes and you go to the comment section, you see people just saying, okay, yeah, well, if that's what he wants to do, let him do it. But I think when you read posts like that, the majority of people are still not accepting that people can express themselves freely. And by the definition of cross-dressing, according to this act, is someone that is a male wearing a female clothes and coming out in public and claiming, you know, that, that they're being free. Adi, let me come to you. What do you think about this? Because as Michelle said, this is very damaging to the trans community because we feel like we've moved ahead. People can express themselves freely. There is some sort of equality. And now it's like we've taken a thousand steps back. What do you think about this? Do you think this new law that is about to come into play in Nigeria, do you think it's fair? <clears throat> um, see, the, the thing with this law is we have to understand the culture we're in in Nigeria, right? So let's not forget that. That's the culture, the, the, the religion freak, and they go by the Bible, the Quran, and that's their own way of thinking, right? However, the law is not clear to me because there's a difference between cross-dresser as a person who does it and someone who has had a sex change, like um, Sava, Sahara, so where do the, where's the boundary in this? If you have your sex change and you return to Nigeria, right? They know you as a man before, but you're now a woman. So what happens then? Now, I'm not, it's not clear to me on that. So until that is clear, then I'll be able to know where I'm standing on this. But if you're gonna be a cross dresser, I mean, if there's a stage, they allow you to have you on the stage. I'm sure they won't mind you having it in your house, indoor. But hey, by going on the streets, is where they believe that you're now bringing yourself to our community and we're not going to accept it. And that's Nigeria. I'm sorry, the, if you're in Rome, 
you behave like a Roman. We can be saying we're in England, whatever. There's things in England they will say we can't say. And as an Nigeria, we know that we can tell people off and say it, you know? So, but because we're in a political correctness place, we can't say it. So I would think we have to respect whatever law they're bringing in, but the law needs to be clarified. It's not cleared yet. Because it's kind of, it's, it's, it's vague. Because they're talking about cross dressers They haven't touched the trans people. You know, until they touch that, then we'll know where we stand. Okay. Thank you very much. Jude, I see a lot of nodding. Are you in agreement with what Ade is saying? He's saying yeah. that they haven't quite clarified because there are a lot of gray areas and this is something new okay there are a lot of gray areas they haven't quite clarified because for me as Adi said if you're in your house and you cross dress right for, for example like Bobriski he's at home he does his makeup puts on his wig and his clothes and does a video and put it on Instagram is that still seen as breaking the law because he's not out in the community he's in the comfort of his home but he's put the video on Instagram what do you say about that Jude? I, I think uh, my my uh the way I just started, uh, the way Bookie started, it's the way I was gonna do it anyway. Because uh, we 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 we're, we're people, even in England, yeah, who move by catchphrase headlines. That's how you sell papers. That's how you cause controversy. That's how you cause uh, wahala everywhere. You just go with the headline: Nigeria bans transgenders. So my question was going to be: a cross dresses transgender? No, that would be that would be like. Uh, that would be very condescending to the trans community. A cross dress is just, I grew up, I wore my mom's clothes. I wore my, my cousins who were female clothes. So that's not a transgender. So we need to get to the nitty gritty of what this so-called uh, uh, bill that is in front of the parliament before it becomes an act or law. We need to know what it entails, whether it, it then goes on to talk about the trans community, whether it then goes on to talk about gay, bisexuals and all of that, homosexual, homosexuality, whether it, it addresses all of that concerns. So we, uh, until we get the, to the nitty gritty, I'm not prepared. I won't stand here and be discussing that. But you're talking about cross-dressing. Again, I, I, I stand with Buki on that one because uh, what, what does it contain? Does it, does it mean you can't do it in a place, in a public place, or you can do it in your homes? Because if you came into my house in Nigeria, for example, and I said, Fred, you can't come into my house dressed as a woman. I've got every right to say you can't do that. That's my private property. You can go stand outside and do whatever. So we need to be really aware whether that's what they're saying. Are they saying, uh, we can't see you in church like that. We can't see you in mosque like that. But these are public places. Are they saying we can't see you in restaurants? We can't see you in shopping centers. We can't see you on public transport like that. You can't ride on the trains like that. So we need to be really aware what they're talking about. Because they've given leeway for uh, people to do it when it's art or when it's drama. So you see, there's mm -hmm. kind of a room to... And over until we get to the whole because act of parliament they're quite big documents they're not just one liners so until we get to that integrity of what the document is I, I don't think i can really sit and discuss the whole act but again as Buki said talking about nigeria these people don't do political correctness these people go very heavy mm -hmm. there, there's part of nigeria where they buy where they destroy millions of uh, millions of do, uh, dollars oh, worth oh. of and uh, yet those people rich people in that same place they do parties and they have people who use cocaine. So it's, you see, these laws are gonna affect maybe poor and less powerful people like Darren Lee and, uh, and um, my guy, Bob Brisky. But what if Atiku was out there cross-dressing? Would, would they apply to Atiku? So we really need to get to the nitty gritty. So that's why I was nodding my head because uh, uh, my opinions were similar to Bookie's own. Okay, just before I move to Yuri and Mr. Jagodjantik. Now the thing is, We've seen Bob Risky when he does his cross-dressing and he says he's been bankrolled by different powerful men, multi-millionaires and all of that. And Bob Risky has been there for years, right? Then really has been there even before Bob Risky even mm. dreamt of coming out as a cross-dresser. Now, why is there the sudden attack? Why is this now so-called law or about to be law suddenly coming? Where have we <coughs> been all this while? And the thing is, all some of these politicians, right? I, I suppose some of these politicians that are here bring trying to bring out this law, are they are they coveted gays or are they are they coveted interested in trans people? Because someone is paying Bob Risky, someone is bankrolling Bob Risky. How is it that it's now they're now coming out to say this? But let me let me come to you with that before we move on to Yuri. So we have to understand that Nigeria is a place where everybody lives in denial. You know, nobody wants to come out that they are 
you know, attracted to either trannies or cross-dressers or the real bisexual uh, class of people. I remember back in the days when I was in the modeling agency, I didn't really understand the character, the way of life of the agents that was, you know, managing the agency then until I got to this part of the world. And then it started sinking in like, oh, no wonder. So that guy was gay. No wonder he does like this. No wonder he does like this. And the guys that were doing the same thing at the time, they were getting the biggest jobs back in the days. We that we were too masculine or too manly in our ways, we didn't get the big jobs. We were just doing fashion shows, maybe a little bit of MTN, billboard here and there. But the guys that would come to the, to the catwalk class with their lips painted, you know, lip gloss, lipstick, female powder, female makeup on their face, they were getting catwalk shows in South Africa. You know, they were going to Europe. We didn't really understand until I got here. And, you know, through diversity training and all these uh, inductions they do for you before you get into a new job, it helped me to understand the new environment I've just found myself. And I started looking back. Oh, no wonder if you go to this kind of club, no matter how much you have, you're never going to get into this part of the VIP because the people in that part of the VIP behind closed doors, they are homosexuals. Do you get it? So, we, many of us in Nigeria, were in denial. A lot among these politicians, they are bisexuals. They, they have that society appearance of a man and woman who is a leader, but behind closed doors, they go do their stuff. And some of their wives, they know about these things and they help them cover it up. But the truth of the matter is, we have to understand the kind of society Nigeria is. They frown against these things. But because many of us were hypocrites, it is easy for the West to impose things on them. And the same thing they're imposing on them, they will never try it with Saudi Arabia or Dubai. You don't go to Dubai and say you're a cross-dresser. You don't go to Saudi and say you're a cross-dresser or Yemen or any of those uh, Middle Eastern countries. But you see the Western world doing constant business with Saudi, they're so close. Even when they, when they killed Khashoggi, they turned a blind eye because they don't want it to affect their business. But people like Nigeria, if, if they beat Bobriski publicly on the streets, you will see what will happen. You will see what will happen. So why then are we trying to fit a triangular shape in a square box? We already know that this society, they don't like it anyway. Even if they like it behind closed doors, it is not something they want to come out and start flexing about. And Bobriski lies a lot. When Bobriski says he's rich, he's wealthy, or he's getting paid by big men, we have to understand that most of those things are just lies. They're lies. They do a lot of other things on the side. You know, you will be surprised to find out that Bobriski is doing some video entertainment for some people and some money, um, what's this thing called? Uh, money transfer agents are the ones helping him to get the money to Nigeria. Not actually coming from the big boys that is saying, because I have a lot of Niger big girls who are doing stuffs on coded websites that are not like OnlyFans, but similar to OnlyFans, and I'm helping them to get their money to Nigeria. Right. Ah, so, Mr. Them, are you saying that politicians are passing laws that target their inner sexuality? No, not okay. really. They, they, they're imposing laws that are targeted at the poor guys, okay. not for them. They, if they want to get their fantasy, they know how to go about it without louding it, without putting it in your face. They, they're discreet about it. So when they impose those laws, it is not because they don't want to do it or because they frown about it. It's because people are abusing it or they're turning their society that there's so much value into a society that has you know, lost it completely. But behind closed doors, they do the same thing. 
you know, there are so many of them, there are so many rumors, and behind every rumor, there is an iota of truth. Mm -hmm. So let me just stop here for now without saying you know too much. Before we move to the next phase, let me come to you. What do you think about this law that is about to be passed? I think it might be, if, he, if he's voted in, it would happen 2023 next year. What do you think about it? Do you think this is marginalizing trans people or cross-dressers? So, so the thing is, with a country like Nigeria, because I know, Jude, you mentioned it, the lines are very blurred. And mm. believe it or not, those lines will remain blurred even after this has been passed, right? Because... Those ministers and senators that sit in the House of Reps, they can't even tell you the difference between a crossdresser or a trans woman, right. right? But Yuri, let me come to you. I don't think anything is going to happen to the trans community because I hate to say this, um, our, our senates or senators or House of Reps, I believe them to be a toothless dog, just point blank and the period. I would imagine that the trans community and crossdressers, now Derrile has said, Verbatim that he's not a crossdresser, he's an artist, he lives in his own way. Maybe a Bob Rizky is a crossdresser. So we have the law that says if you are gay or if you identify as part of the LGBT community, if you're found in the act, you get 14 years imprisonment. But does they really uh, does he does he does he claim to be part of the LGBTQ community? He does, yeah. he's part of it. He doesn't, he hasn't come out to say I fit into this category, mm -hmm. but he's part of the community, he supports them in everything that they do. Right. How he has a girlfriend. Okay. Well. They really said he has a girlfriend, but he has not come out to say, and I don't think he needs to, or it doesn't owe anybody that. Do you get what I'm saying? But back to your question, I don't think it would make any difference. The laws being passed in Nigeria, I don't see how it's going to affect anybody. The laws don't do nothing. They, they've got no powers. They just go. These guys are not after anyone that is gay or they, they don't, they, that's not their concern. Nigerians do do things to trend. The ministers and the senators, they're all for their own pocket. They're just looking to steal money. There's not, this is just, this is just noise. They want to create a buzz. We're doing something. We have so many issues that we should worry about. We have no electricity. We've got security issues. They're kidnapping people in the hospital. They're kidnapping people on the road. Nothing works in that country. Should that be our focus? The answer is no. So I don't think anything, I hate to say this, it's all noise. Okay, Yuri, funny enough, from what you've just said, some, some Twitter users, when this news broke, they completely agree with your line of thought. And somebody said, I'm just going to read out a few comments. Some Miss Brown of Lagos said, so sending James Brown, Bob Risky, Demile, and other crossdressers to jail is more pressing issue to the rep than the killing and kidnapping cases going on presently in the country. Person ways <laughs> for this country don't die because... No. WTF, right? Okay. And another user said, it'd be like, say, one rep, don't carry one crossdresser, enter. And constantly say, now bad markets in carry. Nigerian politician, no go kill me. I beg, leave Bob Risky, James Brown, and their colleagues alone because there are other issues. And so many more, right? So, Yuri, are you saying that even if this should come into law next year, that's not going to change anything, no nothing, no difference is going to be noticed from this law. Bob Risky and the law will continue to carry on as they are. I'll tell you, <laughs> the, the government is not going to hurt nothing, but the police will take advantage of this. Right. It will give room to, to extort people. Yeah, right. They will you. just carry any one of those boys that are cross, that, that even work like a lady, dressed like a man, and, and fold their hand. They will grab them and hold them. The, the Nigerian system and law they don't have the enforcement to actually follow it through, mm -hmm. but they leave room for the police to extort people, harass people, and stop people on the streets. That's okay. what this is going to be. It's the way it is from and, day one, and, and that's how it's going to be. And to buttress what Ade has said, that this bill spe seems to be specific, targeting daily Bob Risky and James Brown. Mm -hmm. These three will never be arrested by the police. Exactly. That's my point. will never be arrested mm -hmm. by the police. Never. They probably they will be seen on the street. Up. They will hail them. So, really and truly, I don't understand what we. I understand we Nigerians or the, Nigeria as a whole has its own values and 
and speaks to a certain way of how they want to live. Um, they believe that cross-dressers are tainting the image of the country and children that see them now want to be like them. They're very, I don't know, that, that's what's behind this bill. There's nothing that's, you know, when, you, when, when we see bills being submitted in countries like the one we live in, there's a reason. Like mm -hmm. the Sarah Law, we understand why that came into, into play. I don't see why this needs to come in now. There's we have bigger fish to fry. Do you, Yuri? Do you think that people are becoming too scared because, again, with the in this era of social media, a lot of things are very easily accessible. Like I don't know if you guys saw a video that was on social media a few days ago, maybe last week or so, where this group, this school, they were just dancing and the boys were dancing like women. I don't know if you guys saw it, and people were commenting and saying, "And the secondary school, no shorty." Sorry. It's a no shorty. Secondary school, no shorty. Yeah. And people were saying, oh, James Brown, you know, these boys are dancing like James Brown and blah, 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 like Bobriski and all that. So do you, do you think that people are scared that their male children are now suddenly becoming, you know, or acting and, I have, and they, they have the freedom to just express themselves and act the way they want to act? No. Ordinary people does not think that. The government think they need to have something to do to push out. Right, because they don't really think things through before they put it out. So that's what they've done. And they're leaving room for corruption, harassment. That's what they do. No parent ever compared to God, unless you kill a child or something, Nigeria will not bring protest or nothing. Nigerians do not have time for someone dancing like a woman who they have the they worry about how they're gonna feed their children, how what they're gonna eat, how they're gonna survive, how they're not gonna be kidnapped. And someone dancing, they will tell you, you know, to me, but you go to don't concern me now, whole while. That's the ordinary think, Nigerians. I think parents thinking have actually shifted from this kind of thinking. Like mm -hmm. it, growing up, I my secondary school, I have my secondary school in Nigeria, and we had a cultural group. Mm -hmm. So we had boys within our cultural club. So when they were doing Yamario, 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 you know, those outside that we had boys that would, you know, shimmy down. It was they do it like a man though. Would they do a no, male? No, no, no. Shimmy, like All proper right. shimmy. And these boys are who they are in their they It's never been a an issue. I think we're beginning to read more into things. Dancing like a woman does not make you gay. Dancing like a woman does not make you trans. Trans like a woman doesn't even make you a woman. Like there are women that don't even know how to dance. Do we yeah. say they're not they're not women enough? Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? That is the least of our problem. We have a society that is not functioning. Mm. She can't say it's so bad that you know look at what happened with the train the few finished while they were going and these people could have been attacked by terrorists mm -hmm. like when you're flying people are not so conscious that god though please as we're flying i hope the fuel will carry us to where we're going what if it finishes mid-flight we have issues we don't even know who's going to be our president we don't know if we're going to still have a country by 2023 and you're talking about a bill that might not see tomorrow and if it doesn't Do we have a president now we That's don't. what I'm saying. We so we don't, <laughs> this bill might not even come to light. And if it comes to light, the police are not going to... Okay, there's this some, there's mm. this issue going on with the police at the moment. I don't know if everyone has seen it. I'll try and share it with you guys. There's a mass exodus of police officers leaving the force. Okay. And Nigeria. Yes. Yep. They're not being paid. They're not being... So they're thinking, let me weigh my option. A guy said, let me weigh my option. If I'm going to be a criminal, let me go, go, go and be a criminal. There's no point in me being a police officer and suffering. Do, do, do you remember the video that came out a few weeks ago as well about those security officers in Chicken Ooh, Republic dancing. that were dancing, you know? I mean, are people, do you think people, because that video, people were just happy about it they were, and they were even backlash to the, to the employer saying, why did they fire them? Do you understand? And those boys ha now have become a brand, okay? But do you think people, as I, as I said before, maybe Adi, you said that's not the case. Do you think people are just now feeling like we are letting it go too too much? People are now just doing what they are what, what, what they feel they want to do. And before you know it, this country is going to become a country where gay marriages and all these kind of things. Niger Nigerians are doing what they need to do to survive and enjoy life, yeah. even in the situation they found themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's parents that now accept their children are cross dressing, making money online, doing whatever. They just want food on their table. Table. They want to survive. They want to see tomorrow. So that's what Nigeria is about. Nigeria is not about ordinary Nigeria now. And all, most Nigerians, in fact, they're driving, they're moving away from religion. Do you know that? 
Mm. A lot of people are going against pastors and all these preachers mm. to say they're hypocrites. Do you understand? Because when hunger catch you, it's a serious thing when you're hungry. You know, and that's the situation in Nigeria. That's the problem they have now. They don't worry about how you dress. They don't worry about whether you're gay. You know, Nigerians are not bothered about that anymore. They, if you can make money from gayism, they're happy. Bring money home. They will do it. You understand? So Nigeria, the, the government just wants to be seen like they have something they're doing. But they're not even, they're just focusing on 2023. You know, that's what you're seeing posters about now. Everybody's running 2023. You know, mm. and we don't even know whether Nigeria will be there in 2023. Exactly, we don't know whether we'll still be standing. You know, and that's us that don't know. But I know Nigeria will be there because the people that own the military will crush us that don't have the military in our hand. Okay, well, let me move on swiftly, okay? Because just when people say, oh, Nigeria is a third world country, we're not civilized and all of that. We are not accepting of people with different sexuality or whatnot. And here we are in the UK, right? Okay, so Boris Johnson, the prime minister of the UK, and I'm going to read, Boris Johnson has said he doesn't think biological males should be competing in female sporting events and that parents must have involvement at the very least in their children's gender or irreversible treatment that they may have. Okay. He also said he thinks women should have spaces dedicated to women and that if that puts him in conflict with some others, then we have to work it all out together. He said that he said that did not mean he does not have immense sympathy to people who want to change gender or transition. So basically what Boris Johnson is saying is that people who were assigned male at birth. So, for example, a trans woman should not be able to compete in a female sport. OK, now, Jude, let me come to you. What do you think about this? So number uh -huh. one, he's saying he's saying trans women should not be able to compete in a female sport. And he's also saying that trans women should also use women, right? People who were assigned female at birth have an entitlement to a space that is used solely by women. Because you know, there's the argument for and against where trans women can use female toilets. And some people were saying that's not right, that's not appropriate, and vice versa. Jude, what do you think about this? Do you think Boris has a point? I don't know whether he has a point. That's his business. It's his own his own personal opinion. He happens to be the leader of the, the largest political party. I have my own opinion too. I think women should have their safe space. I think uh, if you if you were a man assigned at birth, you shouldn't compete in female sports. That's what that's my own opinion as well. So oh. does it matter? I don't know. Uh, Castor Semanya, the lady who was uh, one of the best in the world from South Africa, she was ridiculed by the same Western world. Uh, and the ridicule that they said she was a man, she should have competed in those sports. White women came out and screamed their throat until they had soft throat because she was a black lady. I never knew what it was talking, not that I never knew what it was talking about, I never knew how the, the ramifications and the implications of Castor Semaya until I met her at the 2012 Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I met her because I was a security guard at the 2020, 2012 Olympics. And where we were positioned, I had all the VIPs coming through there. And she walked through, and I recognized her immediately from the dailies because they, ba they, they, they battered her name and her image worldwide. Mm. Everybody just used her. Africans couldn't stand behind her because we, we don't know anything uh, to stand by our own anyway. And I met her, and I said, oh, my gosh, this is Castor Semaya. And I didn't know how, how I did it. I just went for a hug. And I hugged her, and, she's, and I said, Sister, we, we're watching you and we're rooting for you. Don't worry about what people are saying. And she nodded and said, thank you very much that I have the support. And then I knew, uh, okay, this is why these people have been so, this is a this is clearly a lady. I didn't see her being a man. It's just that she had flat chest compared to other white women or women definition by the Western world. We have to be careful when we talk about these things because the whole world is defined through the Western lenses. They're not defined through our lenses or the third world or the global South. So that's why I don't give a two beat finger about what uh, Boris is saying. One minute he's saying that, the other minute he's saying that it can be a twat, this minute can be so reasonable, the next one, I don't care about him. Castle Semaya happened, everybody kept quiet. Now it's happening to them. I like, I like this life a lot. That's why it will pay me when I get to my dying days. <laughs> I like it because everything comes in cycle. Yeah. You do it to one person, you keep your mouth shut, it comes back very quick. It hits you in, the, in, the, in, in your chin and it's hitting them. Now they're getting, I, 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 I don't want to get involved in their business. 
I don't want to get, unfortunately, I live in the Western world. I'm a British citizen, but I don't want to get in the business. When Castor Semaya, the South African, was being battered, they never stood. So I don't give a 12 a bit to bitty Paulina who comes on to Paul, wants to compete with faith. It's their business. Let them fight their battle hard, just like the Ukraine one. I'm not joking, mm. because this is serious. Because when we say things now, they go and open their blah, blah, mouth and want to cancel people. But they mm. did it to Castor Semaya. Whoever stood up for her, they cost that woman who was born Woman from birth. They said, no, she was this, she was that. They ridiculed her. So let them ridicule themselves. I'm watching the drama. I'm enjoying it. I don't care what Boris says. It's his business. It's his battle to fight. Okay. Thank you, Jude, for that. Adi, let me come to you. So do you think that we trans... Let me, let me touch on Boris, please. Mm -hmm. What Boris has said, right? I agreed. Just like I was saying to our Mrs. Sahara, she's a woman now, but in my head, she's still a, she was a man. And I can't get over that line to get down with someone like her. Do you understand? So the same reason principle applies, whereby you being a man and turn to a woman, they can't allow you to use a real woman toilet, someone that was born. You know, they, they, there's, there'll be women that don't feel comfortable knowing that, hold on, it was a man, you know? They don't feel that their privacy is being contained in private when they have to share space, a private space with someone like that. You know, you can't you can't allow such people to to share shower shower room with a, with someone that was born as a woman. Do you understand? So it, it, it doesn't work. Which I agree with, but Boris might they, they might be government that swing left and right and center. You know, but there's some things that we say that we agree with. There's some things that we say that I wouldn't agree with. Okay, but on this one, I'm with Boris. That when we can, when we come to that line, we sit down and think and talk about it. But for now, we're not going to allow certain things. To, to, to be applied. So are you saying, um, um, Ade, that the public sentiment is changing? Because with, with regards to the trans community in the UK, we thought we were moving forward. We thought things were happening. There was now going to be some yeah, but this, is, this, this is where but we're why getting this? It wrong. We're all thinking we're moving forward because they have human rights. Everybody have rights. No, well, I, don't, I don't really see the moving forward. Uh, we're you understand? We all right. have human rights. Right, yeah. because you're transgender doesn't mean we have to give you f the all maximum rights you need and cost the other people's rights. Everybody yeah, has their own view. There wasn't any moving forward about anything. It was just aggression from a lot of people, and I call yeah. that terrorism. So, they were canceling so people. The, the, so the they're not they're, moving forward at all. It was I just think, discussion. The discussions that we were having. I think the whole um, discussion pivoted during the last was it Emmys or Grammys where a deal said. I'm grateful. I don't remember how she said it. I mean, I'm grateful to still be a woman. And if I could remember that incident where uh, she, do you remember Jude? Where yeah. she said, yeah. So this, and there were a lot of people saying, oh, why are you saying you're a woman? And people were like, well, she is a woman. So that was where these conversations now started kind of coming back and the trans community, I wouldn't say a backlash, but there was a turning point um, support wise. Like women should be able to say, as about cis women, as we, myself and Celia, who were born as women, should be able to stand and say, I'm a woman without another person that is a trans woman or a trans man telling them how they should feel. And if I, if I, if I quickly comment, I, I know you mentioned Adele. We must be very careful not to get caught, caught up by these celebrities. They're all fake. They're not, they, don't even have, they don't even have substance. Mm. Adele never stood up for women until she's on a platform now making well, let me I know I'm, let me tell you why I'm coming to this. There's a professor who suffered for this. Did, did you mention her name? No. Because she stood for women, she was chased out of her job. That's her. There's J.K. Rowling who's been suffering hammers from left president, but she's rich. Who knows whether she's going through depression because she's standing by what she said. There is a Labour MP that's mm. been so ostracized by her Labour Party and conservatives are the one even supporting her just because she says the definition of woman should stand. I am a woman. I shouldn't be afraid to say that. Now, let you you, you might think, oh, the conversation started with Adele. No, she just jumped I on the I never said the conversation no, 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 started I'm with I'm just it. saying. Yeah. Now, because that's a name we remember. That's a name people will remember. Now, Labour Party is, I'm a, I'm a bona fide member of Labour Party. Mm. And I have these discussions with them all the time. These people test the waters with that. Labour Party is a main how do I have antagonist pushing this agenda forward of not being able to stand up as a woman? What I'm telling people in this country where I'm in today, I don't really care about the backlash. I have places to go. The thing I need to tell people about this, stand up for what you believe in. Don't be pushed because people will push you. It was, vegan, it was veganism one time. If you didn't eat vegan food, 
These people will terrorize you to the bone. Now, if you go to parties, if you go to your office party, there's no option for people who eat meat. You start from the default position of a vegan diet. Now, it became the so-called eco-terrorist. Hmm. It's not my business if I drive a Jeep. Go hang yourself somewhere. The climate is not because of me. It's not burning because of me. Climate change people, for example, they're terrorists. They, they burned the whole climate wherever. They burned fossil fuel forever. They've developed their nations. Now Africa and China want to develop. You almost suddenly become like Greta Thunberg, that lunatic. They all become, uh, become terrorists, destroying the rest of us. It's the same agenda they're using. People push them. And going back to Nigeria, let me tell you, the, the thing they're passing through the parliament now, discussing, is not a public opinion. It's not a people uh, bill that people are being pushed. Let me tell you how it happens. People need to go to the nitty gritty, even when your pastor's open mouth to talk. Go know where that post is coming from. America has so many uh, evangelistic, evangelical organizations that sponsors Nigerians, their mm -hmm. pastors, and they're the one pushing these bills through your parliament. They're testing waters for the fight coming in future. Your MPs, like I think you already said it, because they, they can be bent easily because of little change and just giving them a scholarship for their children mm -hmm. to go to school in Texas or Chicago, they can bend. They're testing waters. Nigerians, too, think they don't care about this opinion. They should care. They should care because once this is taken away from you, that will be, that will come. They're just testing what is our country is the next battleground because Europe is finished. Now, the only thing Europeans are fighting for is the definition of a woman. That, Europe has gone to the height of liberal democracy. There's no, there's no going beyond that, that, except they go down again and destroy the whole Europe. But Africa is a fertile soil. Uh, Eurasia is a fertile soil for we to test democracy. That's why the battlefront is there. So we shouldn't just disregard it and think, oh, no, people don't care. They care more about dancing. They care more about Davido. They should care. This matters a lot because it's your freedom. They're eroding carefully, carefully, one by one. And that's what they're trying to do here. That's why people are fighting back. But what I'm saying to people, no matter what, I've come to realize that if, you are, if you're standing alone, stand for what you believe. If you means you're standing alone, stand. Sometimes you come to see that you stood for the truth, not because the crowd is there. Thank Don't you. The crowd. Simple as that. It, it, it is very painful and you will suffer for it or stand alone. So women's rights must not be eroded. I don't stand for women's right to be eroded. I have a daughter. I have a wife. My mother brought me into this life. I can't stand for that to be eroded because of what? Somebody just want to give us some different definition? No. I also stand for your rights not to be eroded. But your human right, as Bookie said, clashes with mine. That's the problem. I have human rights to protect. You have yours. But when it comes into conflict with mine, we need to sit down and discuss as adults. Don't let yours override mine. No way. Or roughshod mine. No way. I think That's another right. issue here is, and it would be nice to have a view from the trans communities, is why don't they want to have these conversations? Because you've seen instances where, like Jude pointed out, um, J.K. Rowling is someone that has been always been a champion of human rights. And her house, her dress was published by uh, some members of the trans community. And the police failed to do anything about it, which is really sad. It's like if, if this was done to that community, would they walk away? Would anyone, would there not be charges? So we need to have a bigger conversation. And I think that conversation is, we're having it now. Mm -hmm. How this will pan out, I can't tell you. Okay. Mr. Jabba let me come to you. Obviously, you, you live in the UK. You, you know, you, you've heard this and it's as if maybe we're taking a few steps back. I mean, for Boris Johnson to be very bold to come out and say what he said, right? I mean, normally you would have thought that he would want to be politically correct, be afraid of the backlash from the LGBTQ community and not just come out and say this in black and white. I mean, the video is there. He wasn't mincing words. And he said what he said. And he said, you know, I also sympathize immensely with, the, with those people that are going through a transitioning and whatnot. But at the same time, Women, you know, trans women should not be competing in a female spot, period. What do you think about this, Bidemi? Do you think... So, the, uh, uh, Boris is not planning to come back. So he is at the end of his program. <laughs> he is not... He, at this point, he has seen enough backlash already from dancing, partying in the... In the, in the government house and all the rest. So this one is not what's going to give him the problem. Also, I'd like to stress that I'm with Boris in the sense that you need to see some videos of trannies beating men and then you will understand why they should not be allowed 
to compete with women. They have the strength of incredible work. And then you want to compete with a man, uh, with a woman who is just, you know, we have to understand when a normal woman is doing, you know, 30 meters per hour, that guy who is now a woman will be doing 70 meters per hour. It's a cheat. It's a cheat. Whatever they do behind closed doors is okay. You are trying to enjoy it there. Do your training. But we're talking about competition. So I don't see any ground or any reason where a tranny should be allowed to compete against other women. That is a man doing a woman's exercise. It's unfair. It's I unfair, think, you know. Mr. Jabadanti, just to come in quickly, I think there was a wrestling that happened. Um, I think it was an MMA fighter. She was a trans woman and she competed against a cis woman. And she beat the woman to, in short, she broke the woman's skull. And I think that was one of the campaign things that Trump came out with when he was talking about, you know, because you know Trump is very anti all this LGBT and whatnot. And this is one of the things he came out with to say, look, look at this, for example, you know, why would they allow a trans woman to compete in a, in a, in a female sport and have a female opponent? And now the woman's skull is broken and all of that. Well, you see, in the course of preparing for this topic, right, there is something on the internet where it says the, the previous regulation, this is talking about allowing trans women to compete in an all-female sport, right? The previous regulation required, this is for cycling, for example, right, required riders to have had testosterone levels below five nanomoles per liter for a 12-month period before they compete, okay? Hmm. However, there is a cyclist, a British cyclist called Emily Bridges. She was due to complete in her first elite women's race after meeting the requirement, okay? So basically she is a trans woman, right? Hmm. And up until February hmm. this year, she had been competing in the men's cycling um, um, race, right? As a trans woman. As a, well, she's, I think she's in the process of, you know, oh, her journey okay. and all of that. But she was still competing in the male um, race up until February this year. And when she wanted to compete February this year as a trans woman, so compete with other women in cycling, they sort of halted it and said, no, you can't. Okay. Now, if you look at it, People would argue that, is that really fair? One minute you're competing as a man, the next minute you're competing as a woman. What is this? Whereas cis women don't have that opportunity. How do you balance that? Um, Adi, let me come to you. How do you balance that? One minute you're competing, up until last year, she was competing as a, as a man. And then February this year, she wants to start competing as a woman. What's going on there? There's no, there's no way that to balance it and to draw a line. Right, and the line is what Boris is talking about. We need to draw this line. We have to create their own medium for them. We have to create their own medium where they can take part to do their own things, you know? But there was we a requirement to... that was set. But she yeah, made you, you pass can... the requirement. Why you was can it... pass the requirement, but while you are in that system, you can over the limit of that requirement as a man, because your body system will produce what you need to produce. The rate that a man system will produce an hormone adrenaline and stuff is higher than a woman's one. And your system foundation was a man's, where you can get a medical person to explain it to you, which will be better. We produce more than what the, a female, natural born female will produce. Do you understand? There's still an advantage to someone and there's advantage to the other competitors. Would they, see, there's no other way than, look, these people to me, I don't want to call them aliens, but they're, 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 they're aliens, they're artificial people. Right, so we need to create balance to put them. Say this is your circle. I think, I think, I think they're humans just like us. Are they? But I'm, saying, the I'm not day... saying they're not human, but I don't know what that word. I can't say they're semi-human. Do you understand? I'm just using that phrase to say, you know, I don't know if you do uh, statistics where you have a circle and a circle and a cross part. I forgot what the middle cross section intersection B is called. So they're in between. Do you understand? And that's what they are. So we need to create an in between environment. For them, we have to understand that they, we have to accept them, that who they are, and that's what they are. But we also need to provide the environment that suits them, that fall into their category, into their their characteristics. For them, I, I, I think what are they trying? What book is trying to say is this: Now we have this country where 
we we can put our hands on our chest and shout from day one to to now and say we respect human rights. But I'll tell you, one of the worst countries in the developed world for human rights record. We wrote those human rights record to one of the worst. Now look at the uh, uh, access level access for people living with disabilities. People who want to use wheelchair. We're still struggling with that. Most offices will tell you if they don't have funding from the local authority or the central government, they won't do it. So they don't have toilet facilities for people living with disabilities, people who use wheelchair, uh, quadriplegic, and all of those people. So those people who have who live with disabilities, they've been fighting their case. But when they were fighting their case, they didn't say because we have disabilities, because we need level access, we need to make sure these so-called able people, the rest of us who don't have disabilities, we need to override their, their, their own uh, rights and say, change their toilets to us. So we don't, I don't know if you get where I'm coming from. So yeah. what they fought their battle, we stood with them as allies. Now we have level access facilities in some places. We're still getting there. We're not doing better. We're working to that. It, all of this costs money. That's oh, what book is coming from. Jude, Jude, me. And so, so what Jude. I'm trying to say, yeah, yeah, what I'm to say quick is this, do not erode the rights of women. Don't say because you don't insist that you must use women facilities. Insist for change in the whole system. But Jude, if if a tr if a woman, right, if if someone is dressed as a woman, right, you're not gonna yeah. know whether they're trans or not. Except maybe, I don't, I don't, except, I don't, except maybe they still have beards, and will, it will make you. Yeah, 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 Let's not forget some women have that. beards. Obviously Jude, hold that. on, yeah. hold on. So when you see a woman walk into the female toilet, how are you gonna know she's trans? This is the same thing I'm saying. Not everybody with disabilities carry it uh, outside of their yeah. face. You don't know, but we do have what we call tolerance and respect. So if I walk into a, if I walked into a, an establishment and said, "Look, I can't use the bathroom here," and they ask me why, and I said, "Look, I have so and so disability. Do you have allowances for me?" And they say, "No. The nearest place you can use is there in Sainsbury. I go." You don't know everybody who has disability. That's why you respect people or wait for people to ask you, can you vacate your seat for me because I can't stand. It's the same way. I can't tell who a woman is or a man is, but I'm saying the bigger picture fight, do not insist on getting your own way by making sure my door is closed. That's what I don't like in the so how do we? How do we also now ensure that the trans community are are provided what they want? Just not what they, they want, what happen. they need. Celia. Celia, you, you didn't get what I said before. Some trans or whatever they are, it's obvious, you can tell when you see some of them, mm -hmm. all right? Many, you can't tell when you see them, okay? Trans know who they have. The simple person know what disability they have, okay? So once the government provide the medium where those people knows where they need to go, where they need to be, everybody will know where they belong. Yeah, it doesn't stop us from interacting, but it shows where we need to meet and where everybody stays in so, their line. So you see, the thing that, really me, I'm very sorry, I know you want to come in, you come in after me. I think the thing is, trans women want to be seen as women. They don't want to be seen as, okay, this, me and Yuri are cis women, but Angela over there is a trans woman. Do you understand? They want to be seen as myself and Yuri, as women, whether they were assigned female at birth or not. So are you guys now saying that, okay, while we have the male toilet, the disabled toilet, the female toilet, we should not have the trans toilet. Isn't no, that segregating them? we should them have the genderless toilet. They have it in Westminster, they have it in the Royal Borough of Kansas City and Chelsea or Chelsea and Kansas City. Genderless toilets. To, yes, that's mm -hmm. what we use it there. Women and women, everybody gets in. That's, that's what I'm saying. I have the discussion and we have genderless toilets. Everyone can walk in any toilet. We need to get used to that. But because we're stuck in this binary sectionality of having a male and a female toilet, we still stuck there. That's why we're having this discussion, the heated discussion and all of that. But it needs to move from that. Do you know you can use disabled toilets? Yeah, I, I do. I didn't know before. They told me that's what you should be using because it's the cleanest in yeah. every establishment. I said, thank you for telling me because people don't normally go there and you have one, one person with disability or two going in there. And I started to use it. So we need to have genderless toilet. That sorts out this whole discussion. Then you're not trying to say, uh, force yourself on one woman or anything. Just have genderless toilets, genderless bathrooms. Let's do our thing. That's it. Okay. That, that sounds like a Republican talking point. But let me come to you because I know, I know you, want to, you want to come in real bad. <laughs> so part of what I wanted to say, um, yes. Jude has said it. But the remaining, the remaining bit is that you see this sporting event issue, 
the same way we created room for disabled people to compete against themselves. We have to create for trannies to compete against themselves. So if Ade is a tranny and Mr. Jabajansis is a tranny, they can compete against each other. Let them deal with themselves. Whoever wins from that category, we give them the gold. The same way we have uh, amputees doing basketball together. You never see amputees competing against two-legged humans. You know, so if they want to compete so bad, let's tranny cyclists compete with tiny uh, tranny cyclists. Let's tranny basketballer compete with tranny basketballer. So are you while... saying we not because we have the Olympics, we have the Paralympics? Are you exactly. saying we need to have a tranny Olympics or what? What are you? What are you insinuating? No, 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 no. Call it my glass. Tranny Olympics. <laughs> Call it para tranny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're not disabled. <laughs>